not going to be your normal artist talk where I talk about the exhibition. This is really um, about how artists connect with one another. There's been a lot of discussion about, uh, well, maybe not quite enough discussion, but there has been some discussion about uh, the arts loss of income due to COVID. But what they haven't really discussed is the lack of connection that happens, the serendipity bits where one thing leads to another, you meet somebody over coffee and something else happens. So I thought I'd like to share with you a tale of what happened to me in one fringe. So uh, some years ago I was doing a, a fringe show in 2019 called Waterways and um, I, for the first time, went to the fringe honeypot sessions and I went to lots of I, I really took advantage of that and it led to all sorts of wonderful things, including meeting Boram Lee at one of those sessions on how to write a draft. Now I have to say, I, I, I have, still don't know how, how to write Grand. a grant. <laughs> I, I still don't know how to write a grant. I, I, they terrify me and I'm not very good at them. Boram on the other hand is excellent. <laughs> And um, it turned out uh, that we were just chatting over, over lunch or over the break time and it turned out that Boram had only been here a short time, maybe five months, and she was looking um, to be introduced to some of the arts organisations and in particular those organisations that are very inclusive in their philosophy. And um, it just so happened that the exhibition Waterways was being shown at what was then the Fisher Jeffrey space uh, with Nicholas Linky. Uh, I suggested this is nuts. And Thank you very much. <laughs> and Boram said, I've seen your exhibition because she'd gone in to have a conversation with Nicholas Linky. <laughs> and so I then that night met Nick at the Fringe Hub pub and he said, and I was relating the conversation to him and he said I know Michelle Wright, she's coming here tonight, I'll introduce you. And so he introduced me to Michelle, and so in the midst of that she said, why don't we do lunch? So I rang Warren, and we all went together for, the, for lunch at the Hilton, mm -hmm. uh, no I didn't get paid for the club. Ah. Um, and, uh, and out of that grew some really astonishing things. Mm -hmm. I stepped out of the process at that point, and Warren took over. I have to really also acknowledge the Professor Svensla, uh, who have almost invited me to Australia. <laughs> well, I had to apply for a job, but then when I first arrived to Adelaide, you know, Ruth was relatively new in a way, coming from Melbourne, but introduced me to all organizations, and she gave me a lot of encouragement, you know, oh, you have connection in South Korea, you can do that, you can do that, all, all that kind of thing, but then obviously, there were doubts and I wasn't sure what I could do first and you know, Bruce was mentioned Restless and all other amazing organizations but when I met Kate, the she is the shaker. She yes. is the <laughs> yes. and, she, uh, and then because I I had to, you know, talk about my potential project at the grant writing workshop and I told them, you know, I'd like to do something that I can connect people in South Korea and Australia because you know, as a new person coming to Adelaide, I can see so many amazing things exciting things which I didn't, um, I wasn't able to experience when I was in Scotland or when I was in South Korea. So, you know, maybe I came with fresh eyes where everything just inspired me or it just, a lot of ideas just came up. But then Kate, she, she just, you know, didn't let me uh, quietly shy away. She said, Ooh. do it, you can do it and you will do it. And then with her, lots of encouragement. And I, I met Michelle, and then you know when I met Michelle, you know, obviously I wasn't sure whether she would like the idea, whether she's interested. Mm -hmm. you know? I wasn't sure even what I can do or whether I can do what I promised to do. <laughs> 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 it was a lot of uncertainty, yeah. but yeah. I had to pretend that I know what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you did it very yeah. 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 So I don't know how did you find Michelle. Um, yeah. I thought it was
was just an amazing time. Just um, you know, that we often say in Adelaide, you know, it's a small town, but we don't always have those connections. And it was um, just seemed to be at the right time that I, at the time I was on the Adelaide Fringe Board, mm -hmm. and that's why I um, was at that event. And then. Um, it's interesting because uh, from, from Marissa's point of view, we used to always think that our connection would be with Europe because um, of, you know, being inspired by Pina Bausch and I've worked with Carol Tengar. But um, we, when we started to talk about actually um, connecting with South Korea, I found that really interesting because um, now that we work in, I work in an environment which is all about inclusivity, and I was curious to see how culturally that was different and how it was the same. And at the same time too, we had um, presented a work um, at APAN and we had some, we, we actually developed some interest from South Korea. So it just seemed like the perfect melting of what was happening at that time. And I have to say, yeah, it was a wonderful introduction. And it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I just loved to see that. Yeah, the, this person, this person, and it kind of just really connected. I think that's one of the strengths of Adelaide though, yes, isn't it? Absolutely. Because it's still small enough for that to happen. Yeah. You and know, it's also and a supportive environment yeah. too, like a, yeah. But also, I, I have um, a long history via my mother, Marjorie Fitzgerald, Ooh. in the arts. But the one thing that we, we weren't keyed into was the academic side Ooh. of the arts. And we, we weren't, I mean, mum was more than me, but, but we weren't, I wasn't also, I love dance. Dance is the thing that I go and see. If I, I don't know, some people it's the symphony, some people it's the opera. I love the opera, I love the symphony. Yes. But if, I'm going to, if I had to only ch choose one thing, it would be dance. I think it's the most incredible, passionate, the, 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 the dedication of dancers for what is, compared to a visual artist's life, such a brief span of dancers. Of dancing, and to 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 see that energy on stage, and I'm sorry, every time restless dance, you mm -hmm. see the passion in them. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just it's inspiring. It's just inspiring. Every time I go, I think problems. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ha! I laugh in the face of problems. No, no it, 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 it's just the joy in it comes mm -hmm. through so so incredibly and. Uh, but just a little aside here, I, I went to see something by Australian Dance Theatre the other day and they danced what I was trying to paint. It was like, oh my god, that's yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. And you don't always um, see or uh, you don't, the connections are always there, but, but to see them seed and, and, and grow other little things mm -hmm. is what I love. Yes. And and I think that's what happened when we all yes. met. You know, all sorts of things happened, not just for you, mm -hmm. but also for me. And yeah. I got an art residency in Western Australia and that went to something else. And then Borum and I went and, and visited the fringe yeah. in rural areas of South Port Australia, Australia in Port Augusta yeah. and, and, Port and Port Lincoln and, and mm -hmm. seeded all sorts of other things that happened. And, I think that that um, energy between people is just so fantastic. I must say that when we ran out for lunch, I was just uh, kind of blown away by Boren's energy and um, yeah, his tenacity in a way. That, uh, so I was really excited by this opportunity to make a connection. And it has just grown and grown and grown. We had a connection with Ruth, um, uh, who did an amazing study on all uh, on Restless. Um, and then we've been developing relationships with, uh, I call, we call Boram our ma matchmaker. Yes. <laughs> so uh, she, she matched us with um, Light Sound Friends and with the, the centre over there and, and also was instrumental in, in sort of looking for funding. So mm -hmm. our connection with the Australian Career Foundation has been amazing. And none of this would have happened if we hadn't have met mm -hmm. and just had a discussion about what's possible. And it was just so, it was... Yeah. It's been an amazing time, and it's a relationship that I feel is going to continue. <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree. Awesome. And, there's, and you know, it was, it was uh, we had a, a, a fantastic um, uh, tour there in the 2019, mm. well, yes. the end of 2019. Yes. And then it was a. Uh, it was such a shame that 2020 got cancelled. Yes. But there are still new things coming out yeah. of that, and you're launching <coughs> something this year, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. So, yes, so um, I know it's been put off because of COVID. Yes. Times, but, um, we, but it still comes. But it's amazing that um, how 
we've all moved quite quickly to adapt. I know the word pivot's been well overused, but um, yes, it's been an interesting collaboration because uh, we, we are in Zoom with South Korea with a, an organisation like Sound Friends. We have Borum who's interpreting for like from 10 to 4, which uh, is quite a, quite a um, amazing <laughs> skill and, and dancing and joining in and everything. So, um, <laughs> So we've been able to do continue that um, collaboration and that development um, mm -hmm. through through Borum. So thank you for for your many many hours of um, connecting. So uh, we hope to um, continue that, and we you know, we, we have a, a quite a few things coming up. We have a, a discussion at the Bob Hawk Centre um, about the relationship and correlation and what we've done. And that's it. that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Relationship and correlation and what we've done. That's it. That's it. very exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have some mm -hmm. sort so of yeah. 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 um, Restless so like yeah. mm -hmm. so it yeah. yeah. um, So it seems like yeah. So it seems like an appropriate yeah. time to yeah. celebrate what we've done in the past, but also looking and forward so to what our future I, projects I are. Is, um, yeah. Yeah. A, and so I, I, I think this is um, uh, in a. A, a, a real lesson in, so, uh, in how you can just you know, reach out to, to people. And, and so what happened for me during COVID is, as you can imagine, like everybody else, we, we, we have our dance days and our positive days. And lots of things changed. You know, exhibitions got cancelled. You know, events couldn't happen. You couldn't have the workshops. You couldn't do the outreach in the community. The things that you planned couldn't happen in the way that you planned them. And that can get you down. And so in a very rare moment for me, and I can't tell you how rare it is that I paint a painting for myself. That is not for an exhibition, that's not part of a series. That is just a standalone painting for me. And so I painted a still life. Uh, but again, it came out of uh, you know somebody reaching out to me and saying they wanted a commission, and so then uh, they had to have lemons in it. So then I did some, some setups of lemons, and then she chose a different one. And I thought, but I really like this one, let me paint it. And as you paint it, you, you, you originally, I look at, at, at something and I paint it because I love, it, it has to stand alone as a painting, it has to work as an image. Um, but as I'm painting, I think, here we go, and message painting to myself, here we go. And, uh, and so the, the medieval message painting was this is work. And um, so the first thing that came out was, I had to have three legs might um, be a stable base. But it's, now, it's one of the most stable three legs might be unconventional, but it's it's one of the most um, stable things that you can have. So that was my stable uh, base. Dance like um, nobody's watching. Life gives you lemons, makes no uh, uh, Dance like nobody's watching. Uh, the strong, powerful female uh, who dances legs. You know, that, they reminded me of flamenco yeah, dancers or. Or tango dancers, or you know, somebody with a bit of get up and go in their life. The the spiraling appeal was to watch my spiraling thoughts and to be conscious of them, and then to choose instead of peeling to off into some to have zest in life, and so to have a bit of a and you know, just twist that to the end, and that's a choice. And then uh, the limbs were about how important my garden was during COVID. And as I'm painting away, as often happens, the real reason behind a work becomes apparent to you the more you work as the more you paint on And a call came out from Restless because their fit and money had been cut. And yet, surprise, there. And yet, uh, and yet, astonishing, astonishing, and this incredibly important and so vibrant and successful company should be so slighted by federal funding. I'm sorry, I'm going to say that almost. I can do that one other way I can. Um, I know that um, I can do that if I don't get anything at all. It won't make any difference to me. Um, so when the call came out, I thought, um, throw money. You know, how how can I help? Okay, now I can. I was going throw money at restless because I don't have it to throw, and all of us were going through uh, loss of income. So and I thought, but I can still get my energy. Energy is something that I can give. So, uh, but if I if I gifted them the painting, then it's just. One will say that's um, it. There's, there's, uh, there's nothing else there. Uh, but I thought if I did a limited edition print 
of the painting so that it could be a source of ongoing income for residents. So we've created, I've created a limited edition print catalog reveal. So um, this is the limited edition print that's exclusive to Restless Dance. And uh, the same sorts of things apply. I mean, what is more inclusive than a Fiji dancer? The red shoes now reference also Hans Christian Andersen's famous story of the dancers who couldn't stop dancing. The zest for life is what we see every time we see them on stage. They're just amazing. But now so, the curtain becomes, uh, don't bring the curtain uh, down on the arts. And so uh, this uh, is a specific colourway for, for Western um, Dance. It's got a purple background, not blue like my original. Um, and the idea is, is that this is a limited edition print of the It's exclusive to wrestlers. I've given them the rights to this image. So, so they really get every cent goes to Restless. So I really want to encourage people to order it. Go online onto Restless's uh, website and order it. Um, ring them up and say, I bought one. Um, the other thing is I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, ProLab Imaging, who are doing the prints for us, and to Elite. Uh, picture framing who have given us a 30% discount sold. on framing um, so for the rest of the year on any of the previous sold. sold. Um, so and people have really come and together and to get behind this for the rest of us. They sell the purple and, edition. Um, and the idea is really is that if they sell the purple edition, that they could change the background and they could have a green background, you know, a, a ongoing golden background or a, or a green background and it could be an ongoing so limited that edition that of 10 every time there is a new colour. And so I think that for uh, our yes. hopefully will be a source of income for people get behind it well enough. Uh, for so, years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if people get behind it well enough. Yeah. So, um, as well, so this is uh, what I love as well, that something begun purely for me becomes about more than me, it becomes about the community and if my energy can help uh, keep them dancing a little bit longer, then that's it. It's a very special gift to be given, and um, well, I know it's very close to our hearts. It's, it's not a normal marketing strategy. Well, I know it's a bit of a feel. Oh, no, it's not, it's not a normal marketing strategy. <laughs> but it's great that a uh, different way of thinking about how to, to support the arts, and I think at this time with COVID, it's really, you've realised how important the arts are in mean, everyone's life. Especially um, at the moment. I challenge anyone who says, oh, it's just the arts, especially at the moment. All the sporting that's going on, which is fantastic, don't get me wrong. I think that's amazing. But I challenge anyone who says the arts is not important. Like, have they read books? Have they watched TV? Have they appreciated the painting? Have they seen the mural? Yeah, but I'm sorry, have they picked up a cup? Yes, you know, I've designed the top. Yeah, you know, like, have they, you know, so it, it is absolutely everywhere in, in life and, and to. Um, teach us all it into something that happens in the theatre of our dance days. And I also love the lead feelness of it because our dancers, they are pretty stereotypical dancers and they, they, it is about uniqueness and about what gifts they can bring to the creative process. And you see that honesty on stage and I feel, feel like, you know, it's a, it's a great connection. Thank you very much. And how are the people who we have met for many, many, many years? I hope you have another 30.